<laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Um, what do you what do you think? What's your um? What would you say is one of the better players you played with and you played played against? Uh, oh, playing with, I think in, in the position that I played, I think uh, Noel Teasdale have to be one of the one of the best ones. Yeah. Uh, and against, uh, I, I mentioned John Schultz. Yeah. He was probably the hardest uh, uh, bony sort of a. He wasn't particularly bulky, but he was hard and, and strong. So he really knew when he, oh, yes, uh, yeah. when he had a clash. Clash, yeah. But he, uh, but there were, there were a lot of players that, uh, uh, but they yeah. all, all had their, all had their yeah, all had strengths in there. Yeah. What What was it like at the club when uh, Noel Teasdale lost the Brownlow? Were you there at the club when he, uh, when he won it on Campac? I. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether I was yeah. there then. Okay. How did, how did you find out about uh, your position? Like you're in New South Wales, and and it wasn't uh, wasn't a lot of media back then that uh, would advertise the team. Apparently, you found out. How there's, did you find out? There certainly wasn't. Uh, it was very difficult to to hear anything happening down here. There were there were no TV shows as such uh, broadcast into New South Wales anyway. So the team selection on Thursday night um, uh, was one of the radio stations would would announce the teams, yep. and if we were lucky enough in in Wollongong to uh, pick up that station, then you heard whether you were in the side or not. There was nothing in the following day's papers, okay. and unless you've telephoned somebody, um, you didn't know whether you were in the side till you. Till I flew down uh, and arrived on Friday night. In the, in so, so a, a club, a club official, would they ring you, or you uh, pretty much no? No, I had, I had tickets to come down. down so yeah. whether I was in the side or, or, or not, to yeah. come down. Yeah. What, what was the flight like back then? Oh, well, no, <laughs> the good old answer days. Good old yeah. answer days, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so maybe. Anything you'd like to say about your family? How many children or...? Well, my, my sister, uh, I have one sister, one sister and she had five kids and uh, uh, two of her sons, Arnold and Robert Brydis, they, uh, they of course played for North, so uh, there's a... There's a good North link there? A good, a good North link. Yeah. Uh, the other one, she also had a daughter who married Shane Zumtak. Who also played some games with North, I believe, but he was mainly with Melbourne at the time. So it was a good little network. And yeah, good little network. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you say you have a son? I have a son, yes. Yeah, yeah. and he was quite quite successful on the. Yes, uh... he, he was a basketballer. He played uh, uh, for Melbourne Magic originally as a, a school after leaving school, um, and they won the premiership that year for. National Basketball League, and then um, Luke made the Australian under 23 side, which uh, played in the World Championships in Spain, okay. and then he he joined Townsville Crocs, and then Cairns later. So he's, he's had a pretty good good run. Yeah, good run. Okay. Um, okay. So when. How did you find out from North that um, you were no longer required, or how did, what was the process like back uh, then in relation in, to? In uh, in eighty four, during the year, you you could sense that you were on the on the outer. On the outer, yeah. yeah they were trying to rebuild a side with, uh, particularly uh, to give Teasdale more hand as uh, in a. Uh, uh, a bit more robust com capacity. They were okay. looking for the players like Bob Pascoe and uh, and so on. Yeah. And uh, there was some of the younger players who uh, needed a bit of uh, uh, building up oh. over a, a period of time. Well, mm -hmm. uh, coaches <laughs> need results yeah. immediately. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so I, I could see the the writing was on the wall, and uh, I was just delisted. Uh, no one actually, I don't think, ever, ever said uh, whether you're going to be part of it. For, 
Wow. But if you keep playing in the reserves and not getting a run, uh, you, you get knew the that you were on the outfield. <laughs> yeah, get the subtle hint there. Yeah. But you also, I mean, fantastically, you sort of had a backup plan with your, your career and your career did, was sort yeah. of moving in. Yeah. So I moved back to, to uh, I was actually offered a job um, with a company starting up in Wollongong. Um, and uh, I joined them and moved back to New South Wales uh, in my in my new job. Yeah. And did you continue some football over in New South Wales? Uh, I did. Uh, Barry Cheatley actually uh, was instrumental in uh, getting me to play with Western Suburbs in Sydney, and I played several seasons there. We we won a couple of premierships and uh, finished up playing in the New South Wales state side. And seven, I think seven games for New South Wales. Played in the uh, second division uh, Australian Championships in Canberra one year. And then so they, they won the title that year, did they, in no. the second division? No. no. Oh, yeah. Who, Queensland? Uh, I think... Uh, BFA? Uh, BFA won it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, you saw a couple of the old, old ex-VFL players up up there in uh, New South yes, Wales, did you? Yeah, Dennis Ralston played. Uh, he was actually captain of one, one of the New South Wales sides. One one game we played. Okay. So uh, there were a few. Yeah, yeah. but uh, work work uh, took over at that time, and work, work took over. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I think I, I played about three seasons with, with West, and then I gave it away. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, a few years later. I was approached by Wollongong University. They were, they were looking for another team to enter into a local South Coast competition. Okay. So I started to coach and uh, finished up getting fit enough to play. So I played another couple of years uh, with Wollongong University. Okay. So <laughs> how, how did you find the coaching side of things? Oh, it was very interesting. Yeah. Um, we were quite successful. We had some good because universities have players that come from all over, you know, not just from the local area, there were people from Western Australia and from South Australia and from Victoria. Yeah. Um, but getting the blighters on the field every weekend was the biggest challenge. Yeah, not, especially not the actual, the physical coaching and the uh, <laughs> tactics were okay, it's just getting people there. Uni the, students will be uni students. That's right. <laughs> It was a good surf running, they'd be at the surf. If uh, they wanted to play rugby that day, they'd be at the rugby ground and not at the rules ground. So, so it was that free freedom type scenario yeah. back those days, wasn't it? Do you keep in touch with many of the people that you've met through, through the time at North Melbourne or uh, do you keep a drift of the game a bit? Because um, living up in New South Wales, so apart from family, hmm. uh, I have not run across too many. Yeah. I see our mate uh, Ray Murphy, uh, the uh, potato farmer yeah. uh, in Ballarat, from time to time when I visit, visit up there. Yeah. So, uh, but apart from him, uh, I don't see too many of them. See too many? Do, do the club keep in touch with you? Through the past players? I've been for 40 yeah. odd years, so uh, yeah. uh, I'm a club member, so I get the the literature and yeah. uh, do you keep up with the game at all? Do you have time? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. How do you think they're going? <laughs> at the moment, uh, well, I saw the game this week actually. Yeah. Uh, first one for a long time, yeah. uh, and I thought they they played very well. Yeah. Yeah. So, like you said, that probably would have suited your sort of style of game—a more free-flowing sort of. Yeah, yeah a little bit different. Yeah. Different. Todd Goldstein looked good. Yes. Yeah. He was good, but he played well. Man. Yeah. Um. What else have we got? You, back then, um, what were the fans like back then? Did they were they involved? You, you mentioned you had some memorabilia out at the time, and what, what was it like? I mean, would you get your face on? You shown us a few newspaper articles and things like oh, that yes. that you've kept. Uh, uh, some is there any uh, odd places that you'd see your face? Well, I think there was one. Uh, uh, someone brought me in a, a Coca Cola top, and uh, the face was on. On the inside of the Coca Cola bottle. Okay. So uh, I don't know how how that came about, but I'm sure the league had something to do with with promoting game, with putting different players. 
So back yeah. then you would never have a, a manager or an agent as such, or with the good players, or with the, oh, like, yeah. the, oh, yeah. the, the, the older sort of, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they were just played on passion and that, and I, I recall someone saying that the captain would probably get a little bit more money or something. I'm sure uh, yeah. that was the case. Uh, whether uh, uh, they had side deals on, on you know, advertising or something. Little uh, incentive. But not, the, the majority of players wouldn't have had anything like that. Mm. No. Did you get paid for playing reserves? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think so, but you know, it was, in those days money was, uh, that whatever you got was welcome, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it may have been half what the first got or something like that. Yeah. So, um, so, so you, you, you mentioned about robust players. What was your, uh, what was the uh, weights like back then? Were you encouraged to use the weights, or was it more sort of uh, body? Well, when I moved down to Melbourne, um, North actually uh, suggested that I do some weight training to beef up a bit, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was sort of just under 14 stone in those days, which is... That would have been a good weight for a six foot four. Yeah, yeah. It, it was okay. Yeah. But uh, I needed to get uh, get some... Uh, uh, Beef? Yeah, bulk, bulk. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more bulk. Yeah. And uh, they not didn't have a, a gym. There was no uh, regular uh, weight training as such. But they arranged... One of the fans, I think, had a... A, a backyard gym in a garage somewhere <laughs> over in Hawthorne and, and a couple of us used to go over there and, uh, and go through a program. Um, okay. So uh, it certainly uh, was good yeah. Yeah. and uh, certainly helped uh, helped in, in becoming stronger anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, they encourage a bit of boxing back in the day? No. Or? no? I, I wouldn't. I okay, you didn't make it? Didn't get involved. Uh, yeah. Not that I saw at the club, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, anything else you'd like to uh, share with us, or any anecdotes, or anything that sticks in your mind about your time at North, or your, your life, or...? No, it's... Uh, you're talking about... Uh, fans. I think that... North fans have always been pretty passionate, and um, particularly the the die-hard North supporters who lived in the North area, and uh, they were always great to uh, to talk to, and, uh, and they, they were pretty uh, pretty passionate in uh, in supporting the team anyway. So. <laughs> So they were quite. Did you as a as a player? Would you often hear? Would that spur you on when you? Oh, you just really you really focused on what uh, you're doing out there. I think once you're on the field, you you don't you hear a sound, but yeah. Don't. Particularly if you play at the big grounds, uh, you know, playing, uh, you, you just hear a roar. Mm. And, uh, yeah. out, out of the grounds you played on, like now they they talk about the conditions of the ground, but the Arden Street would have been a fairly muddy sort of. Um, Environment at times it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a bad ground. Yep. Um, Is there one ground with the fans or the, the conditions sort of? Collingwood was always a, a, a challenge, <laughs> uh, both for the, with the fans and uh, in the games. Yeah. Uh, Hawthorne was a terrible ground. It, it was a very narrow, small ground. And this was Glen Ferry, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Near the trains. Yeah. <laughs> Waverley was a very, uh, it was a huge ground. You, you really knew he played on it. Okay. Uh, it was much bigger than all the other grounds. Yeah. 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 So, oh, all, yeah. All good then. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, I'd like to thank you for your time and thanks for coming down here and helping us out with this exercise and hopefully we can... Uh, Get it all up and running, and sure, yeah. well, I think uh, it's all good for a bit of yeah. posterity, isn't it? Yeah, you're doing a good job, and uh, I hope it's very successful with with a lot of players. And yeah. It's only a matter of getting hold of them. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can encourage people by by looking at this and get them on board and things like that, and challenge. That'd be great. Thanks, Peter. Thanks. <laughs>